What's good guys, it's your boy Jack from Reworked Muscle, and today we're going to be talking about the top six uncrowned Mr. Olympias. So first up, we got Victor Martinez, and Victor Martinez, a little fun fact here for you, is the second person ever from the Dominican Republic to attain professional status in the IFBB. So the reason he is on here is because he is considered by many people to be the deserving winner of the 2007 Mr. Olympia competition. In 2007, he came in second place to uh, the man Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler won four Mr. Olympias, but Victor took second to him in 2007. But many people say he should have beaten him that year as Jay Cutler was looking a little soft and holding some water and just not at his best. Uh, that's up for debate, but that is how many people feel in regards to the 2007 Mr. Olympia. And so if we go back here, you can see that Victor Martinez, he's known for having some of those really wide flaring lats and overall full development and great crisp conditioning. So this pose that Victor hits is my favorite, and this isn't even a pose really, it's one of the quarter turns, but you can just see how complete he is from head to toe, uh, He's really just a very complete overall bodybuilder. And he is, uh, as of recently, still competing. He, um, he did go to the 2017 Olympia, I believe. He qualified for it for sure, and I believe he also competed in that. But uh, next up here, we've got the name Kevin Lavroni of old. Now, Kevin Lavroni did compete in 2016 at the Olympia uh, via special invitation, and he is also planning on competing at the 2018 Arnold in Australia. Not the one in Columbus, but the one in Australia. So Kevin competed in a time where there was just an unbelievable depth and talent to the field of bodybuilding. Um, in the competitions being held at that time. Uh, he was an outstanding bodybuilder with outstanding genetics who responded unbelievably well. Um, he was really known for having some cannonball delts and overall trap development as you see here. So Kevin Lavroni, you know, he competed against guys like Dorian Yates who are legends of the sport of bodybuilding. And Kevin said this himself, you know, Kevin had better genetics than Dorian but Kevin didn't have the work ethic that Dorian had. Uh, you know, Dorian would not live the party lifestyle. He would go back to London and train in a dungeon for 12, uh, for 12 months and come back and win the Olympia, you know, and that just wasn't, it's not something that many people can do. Um, so that's where hard work comes into play. But Kevin, I mean, my God, look at the guy. So that here he's hitting the uh, twisting back double biceps that Arnold made famous and popularized. So the next person we've got coming up here is the one and only Kai Green. So Kai Green took second at the Mr. Olympia for three years running from 2012, 2013, and 2014. Kai is known for having unbelievable control of his each and every muscle in his body and phenomenal and artistic posing routines. Uh, he comes in also with crazy condition uh, and is known for having some crazy feathering in his quads, as you can see here. Um, he also has some just crazy overall thickness and overall development um, that you know modern bodybuilders are known for having, and he's at the top of his game, and he is still looking absolutely insane. So the next person we're going to is another person from the time of Kevin Lavroni. Um, this person is Flex Wheeler, the Sultan of Symmetry. So Flex also competed, as I said, with Kevin, um, and at a time where there was just an unbelievable depth to the field of bodybuilding and in those competitions. Um, but something that hindered Flex is he was known for not working as hard as perhaps he should have. Um, but he was, he was just an aesthetic as heck bodybuilder with a crazy amount of size even being that aesthetic. Um, almost perfect line, some would say. But his uh, career did end early, or prematurely, I should say, due to a kidney disorder. Um, but, I mean, yeah, just look at the guy. He's aesthetic as hell. So the next person we have is a guy of a little smaller stature, one named Rich Gaspari. 
So Rich Gaspari competed, you know, in the 80s and early 90s. And so the guys weren't quite as big back then. Um, but Rich was small. You know, Rich was a much shorter guy, shorter stature, um, which, no pun intended, uh, perhaps came to some of his shortcomings on stage. You know, even if you're just as dimensionally developed as the other guys, but you're six inches shorter, it's not a, it's going to hurt you on the stage as, as far as scoring is concerned. Um, but that being said, to his credit, he's the first person ever to get on stage with shredded glutes. So crazy beyond belief conditioning, as you can see from these photos, especially for the 80s. Like, you got to remember that you know, the sports come a long way these, uh, come a long ways these days. Um, so Rich Gaspari, is, and he is known for his work ethic, just a crazy hard worker in and outside of the gym, and now owns Gaspari Nutrition. So the last person on this list is one Mike Menser. And Mike Menser uh, was known uh, just for being an outstanding bodybuilder. And he was from the 70s and early 80s. And by many accounts, Mike Menser should have won the 1979 Mr. Olympia, where he placed second next to Frank Zane. So and actually, he did win the Olympia in the heavyweight category. Because back in those days, they had the um, lightweight category and the heavyweight category. And then those two went head-to-head, -head, and the winner of that was the Mr. Olympia. But by many accounts, people think that Mike should have beaten Frank Zane. Because Frank won the lightweight, and then Frank also won the overall. Um, but some people think that uh, they gave Frank the win or the nod because he had won the two years prior. Uh, 